With the quorum present, I'd like to call this meeting of the Co-op Budget Committee to order at 6.33 p.m. This is a regular meeting for the, uh, for the Co-op Budget Committee for the month of January, um, and our meeting was uh, noticed as necessary uh, with the agenda posted more than 24 hours in advance of this meeting. Um, I'd like to introduce myself, Darlene Mann, and the members present for this evening's meeting, which include Tom Whalen, Ryan Rader, Dave Blinn, Raul Blanchet, Matt McGuire, Tony Stinizzi, and we have an excused absence this evening for Cindy Van Conant, our school board representative, and I'd also like to welcome Kelly Seeley, our business administrator. If you could all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> so, I'd ask at this time if there are any agenda adjustments. Seeing none, I'll appoint Tom as the meeting observer for tonight and move on to the approval of minutes from our December 22nd, was that the date? December, I'm trying to think back to when Christmas was, um, to the December meeting. So I'll take a motion to approve uh, the uh, minutes of the December meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes. From our little seconded by Tony. Um, if there were any comments, changes, notes, see none. All those in favor of the December minutes? One, two, three, six. Opposed? Abstain. Dave, great. Thank you. So it's 601 with Dave abstaining. Okay, seeing no public present, we'll skip the public over the public input portion of our meeting and move right into the general business section. Um, one thing I'll just mention, um, one of the things we talked about at our last meeting was the potential for a joint meeting with the school board. I did follow up with Holly, and at this, at, you know, as a result of uh, kind of where we are with everything, we really didn't really feel that a joint meeting was necessary. We will be in joint session at the public hearing, which is next Thursday, um, and at that time we'll. Um, uh, take positions on the articles after the hearing, um, but I didn't really see a need to kind of bring everybody together. Um, the meetings are, you know, live streamed, posted, minutes are available, and things like that. And Cindy's been really good about, you know, bringing us questions, and Kelly as well, with issues and resolving things. So we didn't really feel like um, we needed a, a joint meeting at this time. Question: so, mm -hmm. um, When and where is the public hearing? So the public hearing is here. Um, next Thursday, the second at six thirty. Six thirty, great. Thanks. Here or in the? Here. here. Oh, it's actually. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so with that, we'll uh, and Cindy unfortunately couldn't be here um, this evening. We, I can run through just kind of what was on the agenda of the last meeting, but I think between kind of reviewing the warrant and things like that, we'll kind of get a sense with some comments from Kelly of kind of where the board stood and kind of how we're proceeding. Quick question. The yep. meeting minutes are going to be taken by Dawn. Uh, yes, yes, okay. yeah. Dawn is, is on track. We don't and, have to do our own. Yeah, we don't have to do them uh, by ourselves this time. Um, so we'll move into the financial update. I. Yeah. I included the link to um, the board packet, which included the most recent financials. So I'm not sure if anyone had an opportunity to take a look at them. Um, and Kelly, if you want to just give us like a high level. Unfortunately, I didn't even bring okay, it Okay, well, wait me. a minute. I, I can, <laughs> sorry, I can pull them up. I totally forgot that I gave them a financial update. So okay. I usually give you guys that too, but. Okay, well, we can, I can. Out of my brain. All right, well. The, the only question I would have with your financial update is, do you have information tonight about uh, co uh, budget versus actuals? I can tell you that I vaguely remember that I think we were showing a th about a $315,000 um, amount that we would be returning to the taxpayers. Uh, I don't so know if my memory right. yes. serves mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. A little over 315000 yes. <clears throat> we do have a lot of, um, we don't have a lot of, I should say, special ed costs this year. So there are some students that are moving out of the district or their programs are changing. So yeah. that's where those funds are coming from. Wow, that's great. Yeah. I have another question related to this, but it has to do with uh, the Warren article. So when we get there, I'll, I'll ask. Yeah, so for um, that special education portion, that's about right now at like five hundred five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So that's a significant yes. um, savings. Also some benefit savings, um, some savings in regular education kind of sprinkled throughout, um, things like that. 
and on the revenue side, I mean, oh, uh, um, so you're showing the 135,000 for the NHRS reimbursement mm -hmm. for the current school year. Mm -hmm. So um, that's not anticipated for next school year no, unless I think it's a one-time shot. As yeah, far as unless I, I mean there is le legislation that would do the same thing, and I think make right. it permanent. But right. and we can talk about that in a little while. But as of right now, it isn't a permanent right. change. So I think that was the only significant revenue yeah. piece there. Uh -huh. so. Okay. Um, <clears throat> um, I'm not sure in the agenda packet if there was really. Um, Oh, there was a, 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 a the agenda packet um, would be worth going, you know, reviewing as well as um, watching the, the meeting because they did do a full K to 12 math curriculum review, um, which would be, you know, interesting to just hear about and, you know, an update and just kind of see that the review is ongoing and this was just an update that was provided. Um, as we move to the, the FY24 budget, um, one of the things that will come up is the recommendation on what will be included in the lease purchase agreement. And so there is an, um, an explanation from the superintendent in the last board packet that I'm sure Kelly will talk about a little bit. And let me just, uh, the warrant, which we'll review. Yeah, and some policies. So, um, as I said, unfortunately, Cindy um, isn't available this evening. But if we move right on to, um, I have metrics for the public hearing as um, the next item. But I would, I should have um, included uh, a warrant overview and like kind of budget <coughs> overview. So we'll kind of insert that right now, and then we can move on um, to the public hearing. Uh, presentation piece. So I did follow up was that this morning. Yes. Oh my God, it feels like the longest day. I think <laughs> this morning I sent out an updated warrant. Kelly um, provided me um, with an update to, which uh, changed Article 8 and added uh, language on the contingency. So maybe we can just go through the warrant. Um, that'll be presented at the public hearing. Sure. And that'll get, get us eventually kind of back to the you know, budget discussion of like where we are as we go through the articles one by one. Okay, so the first article is um, in relationship to the the lease that we've been discussing. At one point, we had um, had a, the boilers in both schools, changing them from heating oil to to propane, and then doing the LED lighting in both schools as well. And then we also had uh, the science labs here in the middle school as part of that proposal. But um, Andy's recommending, after further consideration on many levels, to hold off on the science renovation and package that in our next, which I don't know if it'll be next year or the year after, but uh, we also do need to do the cafeteria. It does need to be expanded. So that will give us additional classrooms which we are going to need in the future. So um, we'll package the science renovation with those renovations. So it would be the middle school science with the yes. high school yep. cafeteria. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and some classrooms. And, and, and there there's, might be a few more renovations in this building that could be part of that as well. Uh -huh. Those are still so in discussion. So just kind of trying to keep the renovation plans as their own kind of Right, so this is an energy scope. efficient kind of renovation. Right. Well, mm -hmm. and also, we're sort of being painted into a corner by the pipes that need to be replaced in, in both um, schools. The high school is the more immediate need, but that will cost us about 150000 per school. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking, why spend that money when we do need to do the boilers eventually? So let's take care of those, you know, change those out now so we don't have 
that sort of wasted expense of the 150000 mm -hmm. So that resulted in, I mean, we had had a, a placeholder of $300,000 in the budget. Mm -hmm. It reduced a little bit based on the amortization schedule and the financing mm -hmm. estimates that you have to 291 272 So Correct. there's that slight adjustment um, over to the overall budget. Um, so can I just ask, though, so as a... Um, as a lease purchase agreement, this is a um, majority vote. Uh, doesn't require a super majority. And I would just ask, um, in the event it doesn't pass, mm -hmm. what is the effect or impact to the operating budget, the maintenance trust, or you know, pursuing the? It doesn't preclude us if it if it doesn't pass. It doesn't preclude us from having to move forward and make the obvious improvements we need to make. But how would we finance that? Do you mean the one hundred fifty thousand? Yeah, like on the well, side. it's likely we have um, theater improvements in the budget now in new items. Yeah. So that that's, you'd make a trade off of. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a little more than three hundred thousand. So we would just push that. Yeah. Out. Okay. <coughs> Uh, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, when I was comparing the article amount that's being requested in the Warren article of 3076806 that number was a lot lower than the original amount that was estimated, which was like 3999500 So that's are these changes are the ones that are contributing to the lower number? The, it's one reason and one reason only, is we took the science labs out. Okay, so that basically reduced it by almost a million then. Mm -hmm. Okay. How long is the lease? 15 years. 15 years, right? Yes. Yeah. We gave the school board an option of 10 and 15, and they're choosing 15. And what, what is the interest rate on that, or is that...? Um, these are, you know, rough estimates, but on 15 it was 5%, I believe. And uh, 10, I want to say, was 3.8, something like that. Okay. What's the expectancy of the boiler life? Um, 20 plus. Oh. So we paid off for at least five years before we do this again? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, we move on to Article 2, which... Um, is the, ex, uh, the third year of the support staff contract, which included the um, additional uh, or subsequent negotiation of the step tables. So the amount is um, $162,006. That hasn't changed from the prior estimates, and you did have um, an overview at one point of uh, what the changes were to adjust people, adjust the, the adjust the step table itself, um, yes. and with some adjustments to salaries this year using ESSER funding and mm -hmm. things like that. To we had a, a retention stipend for this year. That's it. Retention stipend. Yes, and then this is the renegotiated amount with FY24, and we've added a year to the contract. It was supposed to end in FY24. And we would be renegotiating re or negotiating next year. So, in the process of, of increasing the uh, the salaries for FY24, we added another year. So, we'll be negotiating in FY25 instead. Okay. Oh, you just confused me a little bit. Originally, I was going to ask you if the 162,006 already had the increase, which it does. It does. But now you said you added another year to the ex to the contract. Yes. For what amount? For the 86,000 or uh, um, or for the, uh, the the for this new amount? I don't have that. In if front this of isn't me. a San Bernardino contract, so right. if the amount right. were listed here, it would cause it to be San Bernays, but we don't typically San Bernays the HESA agreement. Okay, so basically the fact that you've extended it one year is not really written anywhere other than just you stole Well, us. it'll be in the presentations that we do. Okay. 
the annual And you meeting. will have an amount for that then? I just don't have it off the okay. top of my head, but I think it's around $70,000. Okay. Okay, moving on to Article 3, which is the operating budget of 26-499-039. Um, that represents a 3.5% uh, increase over last year's uh, like adjust it that's not above the warrant article that's like the adjusted warrant article because once we approve the operating budget contracts and things like that those become kind of baseline elements of the operating budget so compared to this year's discrete operating budget it's a three and a half percent increase um, that's that's the budget that we is falling uh, sixty six thousand dollars below guidance and it's the one we've been addressing and reviewing kind of throughout this budget season. Kudos to the school. Hmm? Kudos, kudos to oh, the yes, superintendent absolutely. and uh, mm -hmm. Kelly and, and staff to... Uh, I actually think among all of the school districts on the operating budget side, it's the lowest increase among the three. I believe you're correct. <laughs> I hadn't thought right. about that, but I think you're right. <laughs> so... Uh, <clears throat> Should we highlight that at the this point? Right? I think, do, do we go first? Um, well, no, we no. Won't, no, because the well, actual. The deliberative session is going to be first. The deliberative session is first, but, but the vote Hollis on that. Co -op, I think you are first. I think yeah. we're, for, we're before Hollis, and is election day after the co op meeting? Um, yes. I don't remember why. I don't know why yes. I can't keep this straight. So. I'm having trouble with it as well. Yeah. So. <laughs> so um, we're at the beginning this summer. So moving on to Article 4, four shall the district, um, oh, it's the SAU budget. This has been, um, uh, the public hearing on this was back in December. And so um, this, our district, the co-op would have a, a oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm misreading the article as I'm reading it. <laughs> that number that so it would be a 1.1 million of the 2.2 and slightly lower for the default budget um, moving on to the maintenance expendable trust in article 5 uh, that's a three hundred thousand dollar trust that would be covering projects including uh, paving of the other dirt lot um, at the at the entrance to the driveway, an additional roofing section at the high school, um, work here in the library, uh, flooring, music flooring, flooring in the middle school for <coughs> the library, um, music, computer science and teacher's room, some additional HVAC upgrades, and a retrofit of the elevator. I'm sure it's here somewhere in the spreadsheet, but what's the fund balance right now? Do we know? The fund balance, well, I is don't... Is 123000 Oh, you're talking about for the maintenance trust. Yes. Um, yeah, it's around 123000 yes. Yeah. And a question I had uh, that I can bring up now is, I noticed that in the Warren article it says that that money should come from the unassigned fund trusts, that, that fund balance, uh, before we return money back to the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what happens if you don't have sufficient amount to cover the 300? Then it is funded in the order. It shows in the, okay. the Warren article. So in this case, the maintenance trust is before the special ed trust, so it would be funded up to the amount that to we could To the amount that exists, it. right. And then then there wouldn't be anything left for the special ed trust. Right. So the school board has the option of flipping those at the public hearing if they wanted to do that. And they would have to do that, I guess, before the meeting starts, right? Or no, they can, no, they can be, flip no, it after it be, the vote is taken? Be, yeah, it can be. A, um, yeah, the public hearing, is the, it's the board's warrant, so they can change the order um, okay. before, it's post, you know, before it's approved as the posted warrant. And at, at the meeting, any of them can be taken out of order. Oh, certainly, yeah. People Correct. Um, Correct. Yeah. kind of reorder the warrant um, and so forth. So, OK, 
Okay, so the next uh, article after that is the Special Ed Trust, which has a current balance of $231,000. Um, there's probably a little bit of interest in there, yes. and we're looking to put another 25 into that. So one of the things we talked about, I think at the beginning of this budget season, was, um, you know, making a determination going forward if kind of 250 is really the range that that trust should be funded in. This would get us to that range, but to have uh, the, direct, the you know, director of student services go back and see if that is something that, you know, with changes in rate structures of, you know, out of district placements and, and needs of students, if that really, you know, on, on average is that re representative or is that something that needs to be reconsidered? So I would expect with the next budget, um, we would kind of have that flushed out a little bit to make a determination of whether we continue to fund it or we leave it at the 250000 which is where this would be one, if this is approved. Um, Article 7 is the um, language for the retained fund balance. Uh, we had a pretty lengthy conversation um, about the retained fund balance uh, during one of our meetings. This is the language, this is uh, the, the school district currently has a 1% um, retained, uh, up to 1% retained fund balance threshold. The legislation has changed to allow up to 5%. And this article is being brought forward to raise the um, amount to up to 2.5%. So again, half of, of the uh, uh, maximum allowed by law and, um, you know, kind of getting this language out, out there. So as I said, we have the 1% and no contingency in the current year's budget. The uh, budget we'd be looking at for FY24 includes Article 8, which is a reference to the 125, and then Article 7 to increase this retained fund balance. So Kelly, maybe, do you mind spending a few minutes just talking about, um, like, the additional language that you have here and kind of where we are with this Right, article. so this is the new language, and um, that has been given to us by legal. Um, in the process of asking him more questions about that particular language, uh, he let us know that, um, if this doesn't pass, then that doesn't mean that it just refer, reverts back to the 1% that we currently have. So we'll need to have a contingent article if this one fails, if Article 7 fails, that will address um, keeping going back to the 1% one th one if the other one fails. So that language would probably be something like, in the event Article 7 yes. fails, you know, it's, it's shall the district, blah, 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 and yes. the percentage would be 1% instead yeah, of 2 Yeah, I would imagine it's going to be very, very similar to that, but I just want it to come from legal so we get it right. Yeah, so the first time this um, warrant came out where the maximum was 2.5%, the, the percentage was changed on the floor, um, and so that's how we got to 1%. So that can obviously happen here, up or down, um, or and then, as you said, that vote. Right. would be the determination. So we would have the contingent, that we'll have that language by, in time for, um, you know, posting as necessary. Yes, and, absolutely. Kelly, so. okay, just a typographic note, there's an extra four in that paragraph? Yes, there is. Okay. You're absolutely right. I forgot to take that one out. And just the other part of the, um, I could share 198 4B with everyone if I haven't done that already. Um, the other part of the, the, the law changes um, access to the funds, which is would be through a public hearing um, by the school, the school board. Oh, yes, right. It doesn't have to be specifically stated because you're just referencing the in accordance with the RSA, which has that language in it. Okay, and Article 8, this was the change from the original version that I sent out to everyone. Um, Kelly sent me this update um, because the school board is, is, is at going forward with putting up the contingency article for the 125000 Right, yes, they are. I'm not, they don't necessarily individually want that particular article, but they want the voters to have the ability to um, make that decision. So um, just for our own information, 
the other two districts have contingencies and the current two and a half percent. Um, the Brookline School Board does not have a contingency. They just they do have, not the, have the they just have the, the retained fund balance. Okay. And I believe that's at two percent. Okay. I could be wrong on that. All right. If you could let me know, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, and are those two districts putting up the same article language? No, I don't. I, the Hollis district considered it, but um, decided this was not the year for doing that. Okay. Um, Brookline hasn't discussed it at all. Okay. They have plenty of other issues that <laughs> are not <laughs> quite the year. Okay. Right. <laughs> we have issues. Please enlighten us. Okay. Um, Kelly, what's the filing window for petition articles? It is. Um, Oh, for petition articles. It is, I want to say, the 10th in your oh, case. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that feels late. I don't. I'm not sure I don't have that. It's on the calendar. Do you on that calendar. that calendar? I need <laughs> to have I didn't bring that. It. Like, I need it, like, um, laminated. I like. know. So do I, because I keep <coughs> referring to it. So and let me just see if I can find it. Yeah, I don't have it. Let me get February 2nd. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be nice for February second. Um, I don't know if I can. That's next Thursday, right? Yeah. Uh, no, I can't get to that. But okay, well, it's coming up. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So that's our warrant. It does feel a little. It feels nice and and tight. So that's good. That's good. All right. Um, oh, that's it. Thank you. He's always prepared. He's, he's quiet, but he's good over there. Yeah. He's sneaky, stealthy. Oh, he's got Stealth. it. Yeah, yeah. Stealth Next time there is an opportunity. Last day for the petition warrant. Oh, he's absolutely. The 6th. Oh, oh, yeah, for the co op, it's huh? February 6th. Okay. Yeah. Book lines are finalized, and then uh, HSD is 213. Okay. So February 6th. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Questions on that, the budget itself, any, 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 nothing. Okay. So we can move over to kind of a review of kind of the flow of the information for the public hearing. Um, I did send out last year's version. It is not updated in any way for the FY24 budget. It's purely all information from last Would year. Would you plan to uh, send the, yes, uh, I will. the final draft before next Thursday? Right? Yes, I will. <laughs> I will do that. Well, we hold our paycheck. So, yes. <laughs> so, um, the presentation itself typically includes a summary of the warrant itself. I run through the distribution of the um, I'm, um, of the budget. I'm open to suggestions, additions, and deletions. What, you know, because I do what I struggle with every year is as I attend, you know, public hearings and things in other districts. They just kind of go in and say the public hearing is open. They don't even read the articles, mm -hmm. and it's ast it's astounding. I kid wow. you not. And I just sit there and go, really, this is all they put to this? Like, okay. And I mean, I think I've. I culled that initial bit down to, I think I get it done in 12 minutes or so, and, and try to keep it brief, but just give, you know, some general information, even though we typically have, you know, a small group of people that attend. Um, but again, I'm open to suggestions. If people think it's not necessary or, you know, would like to see different information shared, I'm happy to, to discuss that and, you know, see what we can do. But So this is what was presented last year. Talk a little bit about the enrollment trend as um, and, and keep uh, five years of the NESDAQ enrollments. And what's interesting about the NESDAQ enrollments is that the increase really starts in year six. 
um, of the view, which is when you start to see the trends that are happening in the, in the lower schools eventually come up to hit the co-op. So it's just outside the window of the five years um, that we're looking at. But we did have the NESDAQ information earlier this fall. Obviously, because of apportionment, do a little um, you know, mention of how the distribution um, is shared because it's a major component of the apportionment formula. We look at the tax effort trend because what, um, the budget that gets approved or um, voted on isn't what's actually um, raised in taxes. That amount is a um, lower amount. Um, give a little bit of information on the trend of the tax rates and what's been happening over, I, just, I, I guess I didn't want to, it was a five-year trend, including the estimate for the prior year, just to show kind of where we thought the rates would be versus where they ended up being. Um, what are you looking at, Darlene? I'm sorry. I'm looking at the, the PowerPoint presentation okay. that I, I sent out. I did send it out. Okay. Where, I'm just trying to figure where you Oh, are. sorry. I was just on slide seven. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. I should say that. Moving on to slide eight um, is the revenue and state aid overview. This is the place where we have almost as much impactful information as the budget itself because the big change, the, there are similar changes. Um, to the things that we talked about last year, revenue estimate is not going to be where our unreserved um, fund balance was for this past year. And our state aid, um, the composition of state aid has shifted and it causes a um, significant impact on the statewide education property tax and the subsequent rate that gets added outside of the local tax rate for the school districts. It has a it, last year it had a significant impact because of legislation that was going and being put in place. This year it's having a significant impact because that legislation expired and things returned back to, to kind of normal levels. But with that, it means because of the shift, it, it means that it has an, an increase in the tax rate um, outside of the local rate, which is what's um, calculated based on our budget. And because of that, I put together the chart on the drivers of the tax effort last time to talk, to kind of just directionally uh, show, you know, what was happening where. So um, we, I'll, you know, can make a similar chart as we um, look at the current budget for FY24. Then there's a, a summary of impacts um, in total on slide 10. Talk a little bit about the apportionment formula and then uh, show the tax impacts um, apportioned, estimated, apport, apportioned, estimated, and split by town. Um, and then uh, just run into the, you know, give out the rules for the public hearing and go into um, each article. So there'll be, you know, similar language and some information about um, Article 1 with the, the lease agreement. I would um, anticipate probably uh, Krista Whalen or Cindy. Uh, did Cindy negotiate that with her? Oh, no, For which one, Hessa? Did the Hessa? Krista. Yeah. It's Krista to that one. So I expect Krista to give the highlights of the support staff contracts. I should probably follow up with her about that. Um, we'll go into the operating budget and you know uh, talk about some highlights there. The SAU budget. I'll uh, put together some uh, probably information directly from the, um, the deck for the SAU budget. I'm up to slide 26. And I may, Kristen might talk to that as well because she's the chair of the governing board. Um, there's no uh, compliance specialist. That'll come out. We don't know about any petition warrant articles at this time. We'll talk about the facilities trust and the projects associated with it, the special education trusts. This and is not the briefing you will give at the district meeting. No, of course, it's briefing no, you it's pretty, it is similar. I, I tend to include, you know, uh, a couple of additional charts at the annual meeting that summarize uh, the impacts across uh, both Hollis and Brookline for the towns and all of the districts. That's probably the major change uh, there's probably some additional information 
on uh, possibly the unreserved fund balance, possibly the trend of the budget itself and adjusted for inflation. Because um, a lot of, sometimes attention, you know, is brought to where our budget was 10 years ago, but if you adjust that for inflation, it, you know, mitigates the impacts of that. Um, I'm not sure what else is significantly different. The Drew, challenge here. Drew tries to keep me on a very tight timeline for that one, so there's not much more information. The challenge here is that there's a lot of good material here, and part of the process is to really educate the public so they can make the right decisions in voting, right? But on the other hand, if you cut, if you were to tighten it up and maybe cut some of that information, then it may be, you know, it makes the the briefing shorter, but maybe. It's less insightful. Mm -hmm. um, I would one way to do this at the front end is to maybe just compare last year's from this year, highlighting three or four bullets, the key changes, mm -hmm. and just speak to that. Mm -hmm. And then anything else is background information. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I I just recently went through this exercise. I, I briefed the FEMA administrator last week. And I went through the process of starting out with about a 25% chart presentation to about eight. And uh, a lot of information went into my head. So even though I had fewer charts, I still had to tell the story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And so you might want to think about that in terms of uh, whether or not we want to, if, if Drew says, try yeah. to keep it short, you know, to maybe take that See, and similar it's a, approach. And, yeah. And it's, 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 you know, it's one of those things, some people are really, like, visual, so they mm -hmm. want to, you know, if they can just see a chart, it helps them, mm -hmm. you know. I, I like the idea of know, so adding more information rather than less, because this only happens once a year, and I think we, I believe that the public should be as educated as possible, so, and a lot of those charts are, this has been refined for many years now. Yeah, yeah. The, and I, it is I, what it is, because... It has an impact on some key parameters that make up the total budget. And I hope for you know for people who make it an annual trip to the district meeting, I I would appreciate the consistency because it's just some familiarity right. to it. Like oh yeah, you know they talked about this last year, and kind of we can you know take take the budget and all that we're asking the community to support and kind of put it in a, a consistent framework. So. And it's nice but, to have that much information in the public hearing because that's out there for the public to digest for a, right. a period of time right. where the right. annual meeting isn't there. Yeah, that that's long. true. Yeah. That's true. You, yeah, yeah. It's just the few minutes that right. you know you're talking about an article or something like that. So. What are the, the things that you probably run into when you make doing a comparison of yourself against previous years, forecasting what's going to be in the future? You're always comparing against yourself. You could have a good year, you could have a bad year, but you're setting your expecta expectations about how you're performing against yourself. And there's another factor is how do we compare against other schools, other school districts that are similar size and so on, because I think that's a good comparison, in which case I think we'd fare out even better. So that's just another look. I know it's more work, but... I think, actually, thank you for mentioning that. I think I actually do have some cost per student information mm -hmm. yeah. in the annual meeting. I think I do have that, that mm -hmm. compares us to, di to yeah. di so various districts. And it's a set of maybe eight or 10 communities and that we would compare ourselves to for different reasons. So some of this proximity, so we're right next to Nashua, mm -hmm. some of it is because from an educational standpoint, we consider or considered ourselves similar to say a South Hegan. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there were a bunch of different reasons why. They're not always on the list for the same reason. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think I do have some cost per student information. I bet you we do very well. Yeah, yeah. And even, yeah. it's hard. At one, at one point, several years ago, I had considered the, um, you know, like, if you took the amount we needed to raise in taxes, I, I, I ended up not doing it because it was a little depressing, actually. But if you took what we were going to raise in taxes and you said, okay, let me compare that to if I use Bedford's tax base or Nashua's tax base, it just kind of shows that, like, the difference of what, you know, 
a million dollars in tax revenue in one community isn't the same as a million dollars in tax revenue in another community. But like I said, it's a little depressing because of the differences in the tax bases. You just sit there and go, oh my God, you know, if this is if we lived in Nashua. But if we lived in Nashua, the budget would be yep. you can't so compare. much larger yeah, and you can't compare you that. You can't compare so. from the population. Well, Brookline to a lot of areas around here. Right. You get Bedford, a lot of industry. You get Nashua, a lot of industry. Exactly. But, so it's... Everybody's like, oh, what do we compare to this? There's so many different factors. You can't say, oh, it's Brookline and Milford. Or, oh, Brookline. There's right. so many different things involved. You know, yeah. oh, Brookline doesn't have a lot of There's one other way to look at it. Yeah. Is look at it with the top five schools mm. in the state. So you say, academically, these are the top five schools in the state. You know, I've always gotten there. the sense that uh, we tend to be very efficient with our dollars. Yeah, but if we're resources. performing in the top five, let's say, and we're, we're spending substantially less by some percent, 10 percent, 20, 30 percent less, right. and getting top five results. Right. That means we're very efficient, and you can right. put everything else aside, <clears throat> dollars, tax base, all of that so stuff. So if there is a chart like yeah. that, that somehow sends that message, yeah, I think it would be nice to have on their bridge. But it's, I'd be careful that because that, that goes well with parents that have the kids in the district. Mm -hmm. right. Parents, the kids have schooled out. They look at the bottom line, and only because of the apportionment that I was involved with, it was like, you know, you're telling parents that have kids in the system, you're getting a good bang for your buck. People that have kids have schooled out, and you get a lot of, well, it was great when my kid was there, but now we have no kids, why are we paying so much? Oh, believe me, I know, but that's what you get a lot of, and it's like, so it was great when your kid, but now, yeah. you know, like, yeah. it, it, a, it was there's the worst There's a comparison order. that used to be done of what you pay into taxes and what it really costs to educate your children. Mm. And oh. that, that's, that's and that my number shows that you owe about 20 years after your kid graduates right. mm -hmm. <laughs> in back taxes. Right. Very eye opening, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you start getting um, deep into the we, weeds, and what you really want to do is a quick Keep it as simple as possible. Right. Right. You want mind. a powerful mm -hmm. message if that is very simple. Amongst, yeah. And I think we are in the top 10 schools. Mm -hmm. state. Yeah, pretty consistently. We're top, we're number and, and one. And just look, no, I mean, <laughs> well, I'll shut his mic off. <laughs> top three. Yeah. All, all and then us. look at the cost of educating per student. That's two quick snapshots that would show that we we fare very well, performing excellently, and costing less. Just you, you always do have something like that in there. That's helpful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. See what I can do. Not for next Thursday. <laughs> uh, next Wednesday. <laughs> next year. <laughs> Be interested if we could add a, a line to the state aid slide that showed us what the impact of the school voucher program, taking eight million dollars out of our out of our school systems every year. Mm. We may be wandering a little bit. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's appropriate now. I'm just I'm just saying that's one of those things that I, I don't want to get into a big political discussion. Mm -hmm. And there at, are actually at a school board meeting, but there are, um, and that's one of the actually one of the other things I included in the last year's annual meeting deck was um, some legislative mm -hmm. things that were coming up because there were some significant um, impacts. Yeah, that's so, the kind of number that impacts how much your taxes are. Yeah. Yeah. Now you've got to pay more taxes to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to fund the voucher program and pay for your school. Yeah, yeah, and there are, there are some very significant um, recommendations through legislation with regard to the school voucher system okay. in this in this just, just session. A thought. Um, so that's kind of where we stand. Like I said, it'll it'll be updated and everybody will get it. I don't know, um, Kelly, if we receive any petition articles by the second. Oh, I know. No, no. We always hold the, the hearings on the petition articles are separate. They, depending on when we get them, yes. Right. And so even though we had them here, we did hold separate meetings, mm -hmm. and um, they weren't part of this. And so. not all of them in <laughs> the past right. um, require a public hearing. Right. So if, mm -hmm. hopefully, if we're lucky. You know. <laughs> yeah. Did I hear you say there aren't any in yet? Not yet. Not for the co-op. Interesting. We had three come in for Brookline. Oh, Brian, help me. Yeah, what were they for it. Brookline? One of them was to get rid of the retained fund balance, um, uh, mm. you know, to get mm. rid of that yeah. whole thing that we just approved a couple of years ago. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, we had that one last year. Exactly. Was that was the same. Was what were the other ones? No, I don't remember. Three names of truth. Um, there were two more. <laughs> uh, 
abolishing 198 colon 4? Oh, uh, yes. There's a, to take the, the budget, the amount of dollars that is in the budget for, that supports the New Hampshire School Association. Oh, yes. To take that out of the budget. And zero it out, yes. Yeah, zero out that amount of, yes. or take, and reduce the budget by that amount. I think one of them was to expand the size of the school board. That's it. That's the other one, from five to seven members. Wow. <laughs> okay. Putting the, the tax impact on every slide when you get asked no. that every oh, yeah. yeah, that 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 one. That's already, one. that one passed. And Can we, you explain that. Uh, the, the, the objective? No, we're not, we're not going <laughs> to talk about that. I don't know. Yeah. I don't no, know what we what never know the objectives and reasons right. behind why they come. They come when they come. If they get a public hearing, they yeah. can talk about it then. Otherwise, right. they talk about it. I can it say that the over. school board did not recommend any of the three. So. Right, because or the Brookline is, is ahead. Um, they've had their public hearings. Yes. Their calendar is different because of um, their SB2. Right. So they're kind of a little bit further along yes. in, in, in the process. Yes, that is correct. Then, uh, HSD and the co Same signatures or? So, okay, well, I'll, I'll move ahead and um, I might be, I'm getting through this uh, agenda pretty quickly, Tony, and I think I've hit most of the documents. Who was the meeting observer? Tom, we're not done yet. Oh. Um, <laughs> what time is the game start? Anyway, um, so the last item on the agenda is the um, pending le legislation. I sent everybody a link to a legislation tracker. I'm going to say it was from, um, I participated on a call from Reaching Higher New Hampshire. I know nothing about Reaching Higher New Hampshire, except that they have a great reg legislation tracker. So I'm not sure what political fence or what idea, I don't know. I just know they had a great presentation and a legislation tracker that made it very easy to just find and search some things. So I just thought it was worth sharing that with you. And I wanted to mention a few highlights of uh, where some of the bills are going. So there are, is a significant, um, there are at least, one, two, three, one, two, at least six bills that talk about um, increased funding for schools. So whether that's um, increased funding for special education by changing uh, how special education aid is calculated. Like right now, it's um, our if your li our district if the district liability is three and a half times the cost per student, mm -hmm. they're looking at reducing that to one and a half times. Oh, wow. So that would be a, a significant change and significantly yeah. increase the amount of special education aid that we would be eligible for. Right. Um, there's one that pushes the age. We, uh, the age of covered students um, went up during the last cycle to age 22. There's legislation that now pushes it back to 21. There's in, um, legislation that talks about increasing the adequacy portion of funding to half of the state average cost per pupil, which would be a huge increase. Yeah, so the state average cost per pupil among K-12 to is in that kind of 18-ish range. Mm -hmm. So if you were at half that, it'd be 9. Even if it was at 7, it would be significantly more than the 3 and change that we get per student. So that's there. Um, there's uh, some recommendation to restore the disparity aid, which was, again, a one-time... Um, depending on the size of your community and your number of students determined your level of aid. So it was something like if you had um, less than a million dollars in assessed or either assessed or um, equalized valuation per student, you would get a staggered amount of aid. Brookline was a recipient of that, so there was legislation to restore that. There's legislation repealing the statewide education property tax and all kinds of things. Then there were um, various pieces of legislation that talk about the school voucher program, um, including changing the poverty uh, line and increasing it significantly. Some say they're taking out any kind of poverty increment to just make anybody eligible. Um, So there were expanse eligibility. Oh, it was expanding 
um, there was an interesting statistic that said 70% of the amount paid out in vouchers goes to people who are currently home or private schooled, and only 23% are for those moving out of the public school system. So there aren't, I think when they, I think maybe the intention at the time was this would encourage more students to leave the public school system, but in fact, a larger, much larger percentage of people that get the vouchers are people who were already educating their children by homeschooling or private school. So that was just an interesting statistic that was shared on the call. Um, there were some um, school building aid pieces of legislation that talk about increasing the available amount from anywhere from 50 to 60 million dollars. There is um, legislation that would puts up a very small amount of money for um, projects already in place and just kind of expanding it a little, like in putting another five to ten million dollars to um, projects that were already approved, but maybe they didn't get approved to the maximum amount. So all these things kind of address school building aid. Uh, then we get to the things that just get to kind of <coughs> content and curriculum about, you know, parental and student bill of rights, repealing the divisive concepts legislation, um, some things for teacher loan forgiveness. There were some interesting pieces of legislation regarding um, composition of boards. One bill uh, ex uh, says you can't be a member of a municipal governing body, so it really means and, it's, and serve on another board. Um, there were a couple of pieces of interesting legislation that would prevent specifically co-op budget committees and co-op school boards from retaining their officers. So for the co-op budget committee, um, you'd have to alternate a chairmanship between a member of one town versus a member of a different town, if you have more than one in your district, unless members of the other town don't want to uh, be the chairman. And then for the school board side, it was every officer needs to change every year. And I think it might have been the same way, like switching between the towns. Mm -hmm. These were specifically for co-ops. Um, Can I just say right now that I don't want to be chairman? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say that she put that bill in? <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I also, and so that, you know, so, so they really do kind of run the gamut. And those were just the education pieces. Yeah. There, obviously, there are municipal pieces all over the place. Oh, for NHRS, there was one to make um, the 7.5% uh, reimbursement that the districts receive, make that permanent. Um, what else? What else? There were so many things. I think those, those were the highlights. So there's a lot to track. There's a there's a lot going on, and there will be a lot that just doesn't move forward. So it's but it's you know, it's a hard thing to just look at, and you want to be like, well, yeah, but you know, I. I don't want this, or, you know, I support this, I don't support this, and then sometimes you talk to a representative, they're like, ah, that's not going to go anywhere, don't even worry about it, but I think you always have to kind of worry about it, because once it gets out of committee and things like that, and the interesting note about most of the committees, I think because the um, composition of the legislature is so cl close, close, many of the committees are split evenly. So I don't know how much is really going to get accomplished to get a lot of bills out of committee. So we, we shall see. So we'll keep you updated and look at that legislative track, tracker. It's literally updated daily. So um, with new, not even all the LSRs had made it yet to have bills, bill numbers assigned to them. So they're just continue to be kind of updated. Quick question. Away. Are you translating your written notes into like some sort of Excel spreadsheet or something like that. That that's what the tracker is for. Okay, it's all in there. All it's the all bills are okay. all in there. Those are, I like I said I participated on a call and those were just notes I took um, from the call. Actually, if I can get the presentation, I'll see if I can get it. It might just be once we have that initial tracker. Then yeah, that's just a matter of updating it periodically. That so, link I gave you is updated all by itself, and I don't have to do a thing. So um, a quitter. Yeah. <laughs> and you can go to um, uh, New Hampshire Legiscan, that one, and, you know, kind of, it has a, um, a search feature. You can put in a topic, you can put in the bill number, and it'll kind of bring up the current um, 
status, give you bill text, who's sponsoring the bills, like all of that information. See, it makes I, for I really have no good plans meeting this day. weekend. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the yes, other note, when there's kind snow. Of, <laughs> the other note that I'll just kind of warn people about is that it, you, you also sometimes see legislation that fails and then it gets attached to the budget. Yes. And the budget is an enormous document with yes, all kinds of complexities. That is true. And they do stick these things in the middle of it. Yes. So, that, yes. They have this big omnibus at yes. the end when. And so does the tracker keep right. track of things that are attached to the big? That doesn't happen until the end. Until the end? Yeah. And then yeah. it's just whatever is included in that giant, giant budget. So bill. you could have yeah. something that you didn't worry about because. Yep. It, and and someone could it. attach then, it. Imagine that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. So I think that's where we are right now. I don't know if anyone has any questions, updates, needs for more information, want to review any of the other attachments. I apologize that there were so many attachments. I honestly do start the agenda saying, I don't think I have a lot to add this time. <laughs> and all of a sudden, there are a bunch of documents and things attached. So, so our next meeting is next Thursday is at next 6.30. next Thursday at 6.30. So same we'll be, place. Same, same place. Time. We'll be joined um, by the school board and who, whatever members of the public would like to attend. Be a full house. You shall see. Um, Tom, I don't see any other topics. Would like to give us a little feedback on the meeting? Yeah, I think there was a lot of good information presented. I think everyone had the opportunity to discuss it if they wanted to. Um, and uh, the meeting moved along at a fairly good pace. And it was well organized. And you know, I'll just continue to put out if anyone has any questions between now and the public hearing. Oh, wait, let me mention one more thing. Did I mention the town report? No. Yeah, the you town report you was attached. You had, you had finished it, and it yes. was still around the 14th. And it was, it was attached. Um, again, that follows a very similar format to what I, I provide. It um, goes into both the town, um, the Hollis, and the Brookline town reports. And... Um, it's been submitted, so I still have the time to make any, you know, minor changes, but. Yeah, I, I think when you send it out, I review it and send you back comments. Yeah, yeah. a couple of comments, yeah. so. Okay, I think I'm, I've covered the topics now. If no one has anything else, I'll take a motion to adjourn at 7.30. So moved. From Brian, seconded by Se Dave. Seconded. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous at 7-0. Thank you. See you all next, next Thursday. Thursday.